This is Imo State, southeast of Nigeria. As the wind of transformation blows across the eastern heartland, Imo lights bask in the excitement of landmark developmental strides cutting across health, education, infrastructure, economy, and job creation. Imo State in Focus brings you all the highlights of Governor Hopu Zadima led administration's impact on the lives of the good people of Imo State. Emo State in Focus, Sunday at 10.30 p.m. West African Time on Global Television.
Morning is your ultimate destination for engaging political and economic matters. I am Uyi Agmofwebe. And don't forget to include social discussions. Tune in every weekdays from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. I am Queen Agaba. For insightful breakfast ideas, business summaries, sports highlights, international and local news perspective, I am Anthony Momodo. Don't miss the in-depth analysis of current and political issues by the Global Morning team and experts. I am Jumai Manson. Catch Global Morning here on Global Television. Getting on the action. I am Edikan Michael. We are the, the Global, Global Morning, Morning team. team. Business Point on Global Television. The business world can be dynamic and unpredictable with headwinds and volatility sometimes becoming an obstacle for players in the business and economy landscape. Watch Business Point on Global Television as Samuel Oji walks you through the twists, turns and curves in bands, stocks and crucial market indices from a global standpoint. Watch Business Point weekdays on Global Television at 11 a.m. West African time. Business Point. This is business. This is Imo State. Southeast of Nigeria, as the wind of transformation blows across the eastern heartland, Imolites bask in the excitement of landmark developmental strides cutting across health, education, infrastructure, economy, and job creation. Imo State in Focus brings you all the highlights of Governor Hopu Zadima led administration's impact on the lives of the good people of Imo State. Emo State in Focus, Sunday at 10.30 p.m. West African Time on Global Television. is your ultimate destination for engaging political and economic matters. I am Uyi Agmofwebe. And don't forget to include social discussions. Tune in every weekdays from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. I am Queen Agaba. For insightful breakfast ideas, business summaries, sports highlights, international and local news perspective, I am Anthony Momodo. Don't miss the in-depth analysis of current and political issues by the Global Morning team and experts. I am Jumai Manson. Catch Global Morning here on Global Television. Getting on the action. I am Edikan Michael. We are the, the Global, Global Morning team. team. Business Point on Global Television. The business world can be dynamic and unpredictable, with headwinds and volatility sometimes becoming an obstacle for players in the business and economy landscape. Watch Business Point on Global Television as Samuel Oji walks you through the twists, turns and curves in bands, stocks and crucial market indices from a global standpoint. Watch Business Point weekdays on Global Television at 11 a.m. West African time. Business Point. This is business. This is Emo State. Southeast of Nigeria, as the wind of transformation blows across the eastern heartland, Imolites bask in the excitement of landmark developmental strides cutting across health, education, infrastructure, economy, and job creation. 
Imo State in Focus brings you all the highlights of Governor Hopu Zadima led administration's impact on the lives of the good people of Imo State. Imo State in Focus, Sunday at 10.30 p.m. West African Time on Global Television. trying to turn to issues around security and defense uh, just this week for example a couple, a couple of things, things have happened regarding uh, security especially from the army standpoint we lost uh, the chief of army staff that again uh, was a devastating experience for not just the army uh, the military or the defense community as we know it's best also for Nigerians uh, given the very crucial role that the army plays in society, especially now that we're dealing with uh, all sorts of criminality in our dear country, Nigeria. However, we're seeing the president show leadership by quickly appointing uh, chief of army staff in acting capacity. Well, there are speculations that in the days ahead, maybe as quickly as uh, a few days, uh, the president will announce, I mean, he will be confirmed as the um, substantive chief of army staff of course that will have to be ratified by uh, the service but while we're waiting for all of that to happen uh, leadership has changed essentially at this point within the ranks of the army especially at uh, the top hierarchy uh, of uh, this uh, formidable uh, institution the question is what is the implication of this development because uh, the fight against insurgency and banditry for example uh, is now rife all right, so what we need to know about the man who is now in the saddle as far as the army is concerned, talking about uh, Lieutenant General uh, Olufemi Oluyade, uh, in what ways do Nigerians and indeed the army expect him to provide very critical direction uh, going forward regarding uh, the fight against insurgency? We're joined live via Zoom from uh, Kano State uh, this morning by Dr. Yahuza. Uh, Ahmed, uh, who is a security consultant. Uh, thank you, Yahuza, for your uh, time with us on the program this morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Wee. Uh, good morning, viewers and the entire team. So, we begin by, first of all, not going into all of uh, some details that would probably stretch for too long, but Let's focus on, on the essence of what has happened the last few days. We've lost a dear soldier and the chief of army staff. The president has made sure there's no vacuum by appointing a gentleman in acting capacity. Of course, this is not the first time we would lose a chief of army staff in active service. Talk to us about the implications of what has happened in the last few days. Well, there are seven to nine outline implications in this regard. One, the new chief of army staff that has been in acting capacity is likely to come up with a new blueprint. And then for, uh, that is one. And secondly, uh, the implication of uh, all the 
uh, brigade command all the GOCs to understand the blueprint and the focus, the determining outline of what the new uh, chief of army staff or the acting chief of army staff will come up with. And three, in between the period of when the takeoff and the confirmation and other things are happening, the criminals are taking advantage, uh, so sad and unfortunate. Um, I cried yesterday with tears uh, uh, because bandits entered one of the communities in Kasana State, that is precisely Dibia local government headquarters, which is um, <coughs> a border local government and a border community to between Nigeria and Niger Republic. It took those bandits for more than an hour. We have alerted the relevant authorities much earlier, more than 45 minutes before they start their, at their attack. Because they were sighted more than an hour before they come into the town, within less than uh, 2,000 to 3,000 meters, and security were alerted. And up to the time when they went and killed 30 people and went away with many that we are yet to confirm the total number of people that they have carted away. Until later, after almost an hour then, the military, uh, the troops went there, which I call as after actual review. It was quite devastating yesterday night for me, and I find it very difficult. So these such attacks will continue. Part of the implications is while the military or the security agencies are now relaxing to reorganize themselves, if at all I can take it that way, that should be a reason. So definitely a lot of people will lose their lives. I received more than 48 reports of attacks at various places between the northwestern part of the country and north central part of the country. It was quite devastating and really alarming. And the number fifth implication is, we don't know what will be the outcome of probably the process at the National Assembly, that is by the Senate, the procedure, the legislative procedure of uh, um, probably confirmation, or rather we are waiting for Mr. President, President Bola Ahmed to, do, to kind of make a, a, a prompt or a quick, I hope, I'm making a clarion call and I'm advocating that there is need for a swift, a quick action to have the Chief of Army staff confirmed or to be announced uh, if another person is going to be appointed. We are waiting quick to quick for the quick response from the presidency so that we can help the presidency with, with the, the authority with the relevant information. So it is really uh, uh, sad. And number six implication is, um, yes, of course, the new, we hope, and I am advocating, um, I, I know the, uh, the, the acting uh, chief of army staff in the last 13 years, I know, have known him to be a very uh, responsible and humble officer. And I believe that the leadership uh, of the military, that the serving uh, service chiefs of the Air Force, Navy, and the chief of defense staff, in person of General Christopher Musa. They are working hard and around the clock in terms of the synergy and coordination mechanism between the uh, sister agencies that they are, offering, they are working together, as well as even the non-formal structures, as well as the community uh, watch, watch guard. That is the, uh, uh, the ones initiated by Governor uh, Dr. Dr. Diko Umar Rada, the governor of Kasana State and that of Zamfara State. Uh, of course, it was yesterday, it was the efforts of the vigilante and that of uh, the community watch group, that is the uh, Diko Rada's initiative, that were able to even uh, scare away after a very long exchange of fire between the, the bandits who are, are about. Uh, uh, about 60 because they came in 
in in in 21 motor mot, uh, motorbike motorcycle and um there were three in number in each of them only one that there were four in number so when you multiply the total number of three times 20 uh, times 19 whatever number it gives you then plus four that will give you the total number oh. so there is need for quick 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 and emergencies because their lives there are so many unreported attacks these attacks are taking place almost on daily basis and almost on hourly or uh, by hourly basis we are getting i'm getting this report and i'm sharing with the relevant authorities let, let me let me ask you this uh, 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 yeah, so that we put it in perspective real quick for our viewers watching this morning right uh we understand there's a new sets of uh, terrorists in the country now that they are predominantly found in Kebi and Sokoto states. Uh, what exactly does this mean? Even though we have been told they essentially come from Libya and uh, Mali and Niger R Republic, how does this redefine the insecurity landscape, so to speak? Well, uh, I'm disputing that information that they came from Libya wherever. I'm disputing it. Let anybody go back and check the records on AIT, one of your sister media agency. I have discussed about these guys. They are not new. I've discussed about them around uh, 2018 and 2019 and 2021. People should go back to the archive and check my records and check through the media. Let them go back and check the records. They have been there. They are not new. Probably they they grow, but they are not new. It's not a new initiative. It's not a new emergence. I have conducted an investigation and a research, and I have shared the information with relevant authorities, but they didn't take it serious. That was the reason. That is why they are were allowed to grow. So if they grow, or they have an alliance from other people from Libya, uh, after months of Libya and after months of uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the Mali rebels and um, probably in conjunction with the Isuof and others and probably with Ansaru because most of their behavioral perspective in terms of their approach in the fight or in the uh, their operations or uh, mode of operandi is more or less have a very close link with that of Ansaru which has been in Niger which I have been talking about since the year 20, uh, 2009 and 2010 and nobody listed these guys are not new and they are not in KB. Anybody who is saying they are in KB, probably if they started recruiting in KB in the last 24 hours, then I can accept it. They are only in Sokoto. Only that some of the local governments, some of the five local governments that they have been, they are in, is uh, one of them is neighboring uh, KB state. Three local governments of KB state, that of Arugungum, uh, that of Aoki, and that of uh, 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 Ariwa. Yes, of course, I know they have been in, 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 in emergence and they have been there. So if they grow wing, more wing, and then they have alliance and linkages, or they have now been realigning themselves, or they have the, 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 the aftermath of Libya and aftermath of uh, uh, the probably the uh, activities of uh, the Malian rebels. Because even when I discussed it, in, uh, in your sister uh, station, sometimes in the year 2021, I have made mention very clear that if necessary measures is not taken, these guys may have an alliance with an external forces, and probably that will be the bilateral and multilateral perspective, and that will not help matters. And that will not really, it is going to really have a serious effect, and it is going to be very dangerous for Nigerian community. And um, by implication, we are having some insinuative uh, relations to these guys somewhere around areas of uh, 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 between the, 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 the areas of uh, um, the border between Nigeria and Chad and uh, Nigeria and Cameroon. Sometimes in May and June, May, June and July, I was uh, I moved around those countries and I was able to check around that border. And I have highlighted in one of the in one of the programs I have had with one of the media agencies 
though I have not really provided and shared any information with any any security agency because, uh, but I have I have had it in discussions with some hierarchy of the leadership and administration and management of the uh, of the security architecture in the country. So they have had the feedback of that investigation and that research and that travel that I have had. So I, it, will, it will be really it is really devastating how we don't really take uh, uh, intelligence, how we don't really take sometimes information very serious and until it escalates. Something uh, is really fishy. Something right. is really disturbing. Uh, uh, Dr. Yauza, let's talk about uh, yes, something uh, away uh, from this as well. What have we done uh, when the local uh, government or when Boko Haram uh, just came on stream, uh, it was basically around the the north eastern part of the country, all right? Um, Yobe, Bernu, and Adamawa, those were the hot spots, all right? But, but today, when we're talking about the northeast uh, or Boko Haram, uh, we're now looking at Sokoto, we're talking Kebi, we're talking Zamfara, we're talking Kasina, we're talking Kaduna. These are all states in the northwest of the country. Help us understand the dynamics that have led to this expansion. Well, the dynamics I can say that is inability to let to utilize the relevant intelligence and the relevant, uh, probably professionals and the experts who have been working around the clock in order to provide the required support, and their support have not been recognized, or probably that is one. And secondly, there is there are unscrupulous element who are working. Uh, day and night to sabotage the effort of Mr. President and uh, I know the Chief of Army Staff, uh, the Chief of Defense Staff and the late Chief of Army Staff and the Chief of Air Staff are really doing very well. They are trying their best, but even though their best may not be enough, simply because they are handcuffed, because they don't have adequate power to, 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 to kind of um, uh, checkmate the challenges that we have. Even though we have uh, so many uh, uh, patriotic uh, enthusiastic and um, professional experts uh, among the uh, security personnel, the military and the rest of them, who are really determined. But as they are doing whatever they are doing, they are being sabotaged internally. So there is sabotage within. There is negligence within. There is an inability to hold people accountable, those who have been given responsibility. And there is one thing I always say that it is only in Nigeria that you give somebody responsibility and you hold the authority. So until and unless we are ready to give these people, that is the military and, and the other security uh, formations, responsibility and authority, because something is really going wrong. I have said time without number that these guys, we know the belts, where they are coming and we know where they are and we know who they are. And they are not unknown people and they are not coming from the sky. They are touchable and they are, uh, uh, their locations are known and they are individually and in group known. So I don't know. I don't really understand what are really the, uh, the, 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 the challenge. Why we are not, we are allowing these guys to continue to grow more wings. Because as they continue to grow more wings, they are becoming a serious threat and a serious challenge. So I believe that the dynamic, the, 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 the dynamic of uh, um, our inability to facilitate the process of manning or managing these issues and also utilizing the relevant information that is coming from the people who are risking their life at their own cost. Because all the research that I have been undergoing, I have been undergoing it at my own cost. Nobody, nobody can raise a finger and tell me that he or she was paying a penny uh, for me doing so. I'm not saying asking anybody to pay. I'm still doing it and I'll continue to do it until my last breath. But I am doing it for the purpose of having a better Nigeria and for improving the capacity, my own capacity and my own ability to deliver and my own ability to respond to questions from the local and international media, uh -huh. as well as the other students who I'm mentoring, who are conducting research and other Let, Let's talk about to have a fact. another angle real quick, uh, uh, Dr. Yauza. I mean, we, we, we had seen under former President Muhammadu Buhari how that at the point there was this clarion call for change of guard, as they say in the military. Uh, by that, they were saying there was need at that time to change the service chiefs because of the level of insecurity that the country has come to witness. 
at that point in time. Now, when you look at the realities that we are grappling with, as it has to do with insecurity at this point in our history as a country, would you say we are back to that same cycle well, where Nigeria probably, I mean, Nigerians are probably thinking there is urgent need to rejig the leadership of the military? I don't, I don't believe in changing the leadership of the military. I have known the, the chief of defense staff, General Christopher Musa, for quite long, more than 23 years. I have known late Lakbaja uh, for more than 23 years. Uh, that is the late chief of army staff. Mm -hmm. I have known the, the acting chief of army staff, who is now in uh, an acting capacity in the last 13 years. I have known the, the chief of air staff very well for quite some time, though not really that too close. And I have known the chief of naval staff uh, in the last nine to 10 years. And I have known them. Hmm. Hopefully we, we're not losing uh, a stream oh, with uh, Dr. Yauza Ahmed uh, right there. Yes, you may have known them uh, personally, but how Nigerians um, assess and rate their performance, their capacity and competence to deliver uh, within their respective mandates is uh, a different topic uh, altogether. Let's take a quick break now, everyone. Uh, the rest of the program returns shortly. Thank you so very much for staying with us, everyone. Uh, let's begin to tie things up. Uh, I believe we still have uh, Dr. Yahuza uh, Ahmed uh, right there. Uh, let's just uh, switch gears for, for a minute as we wrap it up uh, right now. Uh, today, we understand that uh, several kidnappings have happened the last couple of days. In one of such instances, we hear some persons were killed. Uh, the, the criminals didn't stop there. They had at least six persons from the reports we got uh, two days ago, decapitated and their heads uh, taken away. Well, there have been speculations, ritual killing and what have you. Some say, well, they just want to prove a point to the government as to how serious they are. But now we change in leadership within the army and uh, a few other developments we're seeing right now. How much more work do we need to do to do better in terms of how we fight insecurity? 
just quickly before I respond to that, my knowledge with those officers, uh, service chiefs that I mentioned is not personal. In fact, uh, I think uh, only one of them can mention my name, probably seeing me on the media. But I have known them by cross-checking their capacity, cross-checking their ability, cross-checking their passion, commitment, and result-based approach. Not that mm. I know them personally. Mm. I am conducting uh, a pro profiling, uh, a personal profiling or professional profiling of the service chiefs and other officers uh, across all the, uh, the, the space of the security agencies. Uh -huh. Now, going to your question, what we need to do is to reposition uh, uh, the system using the reward and punishment, fighting corruption, uh, one, uh, fighting corruption, two, uh, ensuring that we have uh, a kind of um, system of holding people accountable for what they do. And then number four, people like Dr. Gezo, Dr. Uza Ahmed Gezo have been saying that they have known the locations of these guys. Then those locations should be checked. If these guys are not find, found, then people like Dr. Uza Gezo should be brought to, through the book. And then other community leaders who know, I know they know, and I know the authority know, and I know the authority, the security agencies and the security heads knows that those community leaders knew about their whereabouts of these guys, and they have never moved from where they were. They are still there. So why can't we do something? Even those guys that came and attacked GBI yesterday, they came from Zandam area. They came from all those areas of Faru, Faru Mal and Faru Magama and the rest of all those locations. So why can't we focus strategically and conduct and hold those commanding officers and unit commanders, the divisional police officers and the security, local security officers and the rest of them, why can't you hold them accountable? The level of armed proliferation as a result of inability of the security team to manage this situation is becoming, is going out of hand because arms are really going into the wrong hand on serious basis. You will be very surprised if you, if you, you will know the type of arms and the, 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 the number of arms that are getting into the wrong hands of civilians who are working hard to obtain those uh, arms because they want to protect themselves because they are losing confidence and trust on the uh, uh, the fact that they have been sending reports and providing signals but yet they will be still hot nobody is attending to them so until and unless we are ready to lay foundation on these five items that i mentioned fighting corruption reorganizing our, 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 our ourselves in terms Huh. Uh, uh, holding people accountable and um, responding to, uh, um, uh, uh, to the clarion call and then reaching out to the locations and hide out if there is anything to call hide out because for me I don't believe there is anything hide out going by the capacity of the Nigerian military I know going by the determination going by the background check going by the guerrilla research that I have been conducting across African countries and especially Nigerian forests and all those locations that we are seeing. So if we are really sincere and honest, we know where these guys are, we should target them. They are numbered. Why do we have to allow less than 5,000 at maximum number? Why do we have to allow them to continue to destabilize the total number of uh, or more, than, more, than, or more than 203 political wars that we have in the northwestern part of the country and other part of the northern south, uh, north, uh, north central part of the country North eastern part of the country and so on and so forth. So let's refocus and reposition ourselves. Let's redouble effort on political commitment. I salute the effort of the Minister of Defense, Madam Bodo Rabakar, for moving around uh, uh, the, the, the formations, the military formations, uh, uh, re-encouraging them, motivating them, and also reaching out to the traditional and religious institutions and making a clarion call for people, for all the, for the public to provide information. Yes, the information is there. Anybody who needs information can invite me. I can testify my, 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 the fact that I've been presented. It's not that I'm just presenting it for the sake of saying. I'm, I'm very yeah, sure, uh, I'm very sure this discussion will continue uh, at another time because a lot is still unfolding as it stands right now. Uh, you, uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed uh, Yauza uh, Getso has made very extensive reference to some of these issues but at this point we'd like to say thank you uh for taking our time to join us on global morning today and here is wishing you a very wonderful weekend ahead
Thank you for right. having me. That's what we're leaving it uh, well, on these two discussions this morning, everyone. Uh, of course, as always, the opinions or the, the views of our guests across all of our programs are their respective uh, opinions. Uh, just to also remind you that uh, Global Television shares uh, no uh, interest in these opinions. We appreciate the time you spent with us uh, this morning on the program. Of course, it's the last for the working week. On behalf of the entire production crew here, at uh, Global Television's uh, World Headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Uli Agmofegui, uh, saying uh, God bless Nigeria and of course at top of the hour it will be time to bring you talk sports. The death toll from flooding. Most time our politicians just bring in policies too, for sure. Presidential, we have several more stories. The legislature was carefully crafted 22.2% inflation rates as of April this year. What does that say about where we are as a country? I think Nigeria has resorted to being resilient. Before you call the police station, before they even leave, they'll take permission from I don't terrible. think there's really anything on ground to improve. We struggled as a strike. The Minister of Education volunteered and said, give me two weeks. It was a life. The president never gave me any deadline. 